Welcome back to Play Tessie. It is episode 36, the Tristan Costas episode, but it's also the Corky Miller episode for you real ones out there. Look him up if you don't know him. The best mustache in freaking baseball history. If you're listening on Drop Day, it's February 7th. And before we get into it, just remember, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Hit us up on YouTube. We're on YouTube now on that WEI channel. So search Please go up. subscribe. It's important to subscribe. Very important to subscribe. Love when you subscribe and you get those notifications when episodes drop and it's huge. And this episode is huge because we've got some big news dropping on the morning of February 7th. That's right. If you're if you're watching, you got you got Corky Miller coming up. Corky but Miller breaking, in your face. Corky Miller in your face is not, yeah, it's not a dream. Look them up if you're not watching on YouTube because it's a sight to see. But the breaking news of the day, the Red Sox are gonna be rolling out the cameras. <laughs> the Red this is, Sox. Yeah, this is why. This is a big one. Uh, the Red Sox are going to be participating in a Netflix docu series. I would think you got like if you've ever gone on Netflix and watched like the full swing with the golf and Breakpoint with tennis, Last Chance You and quarterback with football. Kind of hard knocks ish. That's what this is going to be like, start to finish. Like rolling out in spring training, they're bringing out the cameras. And we're going to get to know these players. And the world is going to get to know these players. And we've got an, a great episode for you today. Because yesterday, if you're listening to this on Drop Day, Brad Fo and I got the chance to talk with Red Sox Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Marketing Officer Adam Grossman about this crazy development. Like this blew my mind when I heard about it. And I was so, so excited that we got to talk to Adam about this, like hear right from the source. What What is the deal? What is this? What can we expect? How did it come together? I'm really excited for you guys to hear this. I, I don't want to hold you here much longer. I want to just jump right into this. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. This the, here Here's our interview with uh, Red Sox Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing, Marketing Officer. I cannot say that. Oh my God. Chief Adam Marketing Grossman. Officer. Chief Red Sox Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Adam what? Grossman. Chief Marketing Officer, Adam Grossman. All right, there's nobody I'd rather have on right now, this podcast, with a collab with the Play Tessie guys, Gordo, uh, is Adam Grossman, who has, we, we, just, we just were privy to a big announcement, Adam. Um, congratulations. I, uh... I feel like if you told me before the pandemic that the Red Sox and Netflix were going to be partnering on anything, I would say, what is Netflix? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but thanks to Tiger King, we have, we have set, we have set the Red Sox. Here, here's, here's your tagline. 2024 Red Sox, the next Tiger King, the next big thing. Anyway, how are you, Adam? Good? All right. I, I, I'm great. And, and, Great to be on, and, and Gordo, nice to see you. I am I am now shuddering to think what Netflix is serving you for <laughs> what they're suggesting you watch next. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, this is a it's it's an exciting project, an ambitious project that um, you know we are going to undertake this season with uh, you know in the 2024 campaign, and you know it's been a long time coming. Uh, because about it's all started about three years ago where uh, the, with the commissioner John uh, and Tom and Netflix had started talking about these like this medium this growing medium which drive to survive came on and you know and sort of the impact that it had of like how we could for baseball, not necessarily just for the Red Sox or for the Red Sox, but just for the game of baseball, how important these docu series can be and the impact that they that they've had. And so that was a discussion three years ago. Um, over the from there, it took about MLB started concepting for about a year about what would work. You know, is it players? Is it is it league? Is it um, you know, is it a couple teams and sort of net it out as like, you know what, it would be good to have one team featured. Um, and that's when we started to get involved and it sort of 
our process as a club sort of started in the fall, like September of 2022. And that's when we had our initial discussion of, is this something that we would want to even entertain and sort of over from September 22 up until, you know, today sort of just continued to take shape with a lot of communication um, with our players, with executives, with Alex, like all, all in between. So i um, happy to, you know, get into all of it, mm-hmm. but this is suffice to say, it's been a long time to be, you know, on a project to see it come together. is kind of a cool thing on, the world's largest streaming platform. I mean, they have 260 million subscri- subscribers in 190 countries. So, you know, to have baseball, our players, their personalities, Fenway Park, you know, on, on the, the screens of so many around the world will be very impactful for, for everybody. Well, I don't think there's any question that the concept, uh, the sort of the structure of these things, whether it's the golf, the tennis, the racing, whatever it has been, it, it's 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 a construct that works and Netflix no one does it better than Netflix. I'm not just saying that because Netflix is this is a Netflix thing. So it's true. It's the whole idea is you care about the people and you your knowledge I, I didn't know who Tony Finau was on the PGA golf tour before I started watching that. Um Probably a bad example because it shows you how little I watch golf, but still. And now I focused on Tiger King, right? So, well, you know. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know who Tiger King was either. So I see. See, if you're on Netflix, everyone cares about you a lot more. The first thing I a question I have that jumps to mind, Adam. I think a few years ago, more maybe more than a few years ago, I think that the Red Sox sort of tried doing something along these lines. And correct me if I'm wrong. Not not to this level, but there was definitely a year where they were going to follow around the team to some extent. I don't know if it was for Nesson or whatever whatever it was. The biggest obstacle I felt then and and for any of these things is buy-in, is, is acceptance yeah. of the, the, the participants. Um, so when you, you're, you're having these conversations three years ago, in theory, it's great. But then you have to have, hey, you know what? I'm okay with this across the board. And I, and I talked to a player um, the other day who, who knew about it, and they're like, yeah, it's going to be cool. Like, that's what you want to hear, right? It's, but I remember back then it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing for people to get buy-in to, into. 100%. And, and buy-in is at a lot of different levels. I think we should start off first with the, with the players. And this is something – you know, when this started to form, one of the things that Sam had said from the outset was this has to be embraced by the players. Like, this is not something that the organization is going to make anybody do. If it happens that, you know, that we're, quote, unquote, making people do this, it's going to die and it's not going to be any good. And so as an organization, we felt like our role was to – cultivate the relationship with MLB, with Netflix, with this director, see how it felt and bring it to the players to evaluate for their own interests and their own instinct and feel, because ultimately they are going to be characters in this and central components of an authentic and real production. And they've got to be okay with that. And so that was a, a, a core tenet. I think we were also fortunate to have, again, we started this discussion with John and Tom and the commissioner. So you know, there's leadership there. I think Sam's relationships with our players and, and you know his relationship to be able to say, we as an organization want to give you the opportunity from a marketing standpoint to put your brand on – our platforms, other people's platforms, as much as we can. But it's up to you if you want to take advantage of that. This is the largest opportunity we'll probably ever have. But also, we don't have to do it. Like, and that's that's okay. Well, we can absolutely turn it down. It's up to you. So he was pivotal. Um, Alex was very open to it and said, "Hey, listen, the guys are open to it. Like, I I get it." Breslow has been very supportive. Um, you know, and 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 I think for both Alex and Brez, like as former players, 
And I, what I would say now is a different era, you know, to sort of look. And the, I think they both sort of recognize, like, this is something that's cool. This is something that's a real opportunity for these guys. Um, and I think, I, I don't want to speak for either of them, but I, I know Breslow has said at one point, too, like, if, we, if the players decide not to do it, I think perhaps they may regret it down the road, perhaps. And so, you know, we've had that type of buy-in. And, you know, another person that's been really important to this is Raquel um, because of her relationship with the players. And she was really pivotal over the course of last season to set up different groups to hear out Netflix and hear the director out. Because we had, we had a meeting with um, about 10 of our guys last year with uh, Gabe Spitzer from Netflix and and Greg Whiteley, who's the director, um, in April at mm-hmm. Fenway of last year. And it was sort of like, listen, like we thought this is either going to die or we'll advance it to the next stage if the players want to. And it sort of at each stage just continued to, to advance, but... The other, we wanted to make sure that to do something of this magnitude and to give access to Netflix, we can't spring this on anybody and it's got to be embraced. They've got to be part of the process. And that's, you know, the players, that's MLBPA, obviously Major League Baseball has been at the, the tip of the spear on it. So it's been a very much a cohesive cohesive process. So, uh, Gordo, before I get to your question, um what was the thing when when the director or whoever the Netflix people sat down with the players or with you guys that maybe was the was a thing that that they they the eyebrow razor was that okay you know we maybe we didn't understand it it was this way it was done this way this is a cool thing this is a thing that we didn't this is the approach that we didn't expect or whatever was there anything that jumped out that you could tell was something that the way that they do do these things, which you know they've done quite a few of them now, that made the 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 players, as players in particular, I guess, say, "All right, okay, that's pretty cool." Yeah, I think where this director has a real gift is to be. I mean, he's, he's brutally honest. Of one. This is different. It requires access. It requires buy-in. And it requires a level of vulnerability that oftentimes is not what your instinct would allow you to do. He, he's got a history of doing this with, you know, he's done Cheer and he's done Last Chance You. Um, and he said, you know, everyone that he's done the subjects or the characters have all said that they would, they would do it again. He also said there are a moment or two here and there that they would love to take back. (laughs) And I think that type of honesty was, I think starting to raise eyebrows. I think it also, you know, and his point too is those moments that you sort of bristle at, you also have the opportunity to explain yourself. You also have the opportunity for the audience to understand the factors leading into that action or that instinct or that emotion. And he also started to articulate much more in a much more articulate way than than I am doing, but just these are all human interest stories. And like everybody, whether you're a major league baseball player or you're at the baseball isn't boring podcast or you're working for a team or whatever it is all go through struggles and there's always some challenge to get to your goal. And there's always more to the story than what people think at the outset. And he's like, and that's where this medium and these platforms and allow for the space to be able to show and depict who you are, beyond a baseball player, but also to the texture of what it's like to be a baseball player, and in this case, be a Red Sox in, at Fenway Park in, in Boston. So I, I think listening to our – he's also a great listener, and I think when we had these conversations, some of the players were very – it was very interesting to hear them because I think they feel like 
there is a story out there that even in the athlete community, people don't understand like the grind of what it takes to play 162 games and to go and, you know, go from Minneapolis to Texas and play two games in 24 hours. And like that, that dynamic is something that isn't fully on display or people kind of know about it, but like, they'll never see it. Like they'll see it in this, in this series. And so I think they had interest in getting that out. I think also, you know, recognition like Nick Pavetta has been awesome through this and has really sort of, you know, I think has been a, a communicator within the clubhouse and, and, and understands along with like guys like Trevor story and Rob ref Snyder, like, Hey, we as a industry, we need to make sure that people know who we are and growing the game is so critical period, but it's growing the game through the players and to have a platform like Netflix focused on players principally and their personalities to a global audience. Like it's a really great opportunity for the, for the entire industry. And, and they recognize that and, and what the partnership uh, will allow all of us to be able to do. Gordon, before real quick, I lied, but a top of mind, uh, I didn't want to forget this. Uh, you had mentioned the cheer and the and the other ones that like some of them love they, they loved a lot of the stuff, but they also wish some of it had taken back, which leads me to the question of who is final editorial say? In other words, who is who at the end of the day says this goes in and this goes out? Yeah, we we do not have final cut. So I mean, you know, it's <laughs> we don't have final cut and this is not a financial play. You know, and that was part of the objectivity of it. And like the importance, that was something that Netflix talked to us about early on. You know, this has to be objective and it can't, you know, it, we, we can't have final cut. We will be able to see some things, you know, before they go on, but it's not, it's not ours. You know, we may be featured, but it is not our, our production. And again, going back to sort of the vulnerability, like we've got to be okay with that because if we're not, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, we, we, as you can imagine, had a lot of discussions about that and, you know, decided, like, listen, the, the, the benefits of this are really important. Awesome. All right, Gore, what do you got? Yeah, so I, I think this is super exciting. I'm just curious about what kind of picture you can paint about <clears throat> what they've sort of explained to you about the different kinds of access they want and that you guys are going to give them. Uh, when is filming going to start? And well, yeah, yeah, I guess just when do you guys anticipate the project getting going? Yeah, it's going to start in spring training. So they'll be there for a, a handful of weeks in spring training. Um, and, you know, the, the agreement was about providing access. And, you know, really, like, they're going to be in the clubhouse a lot for those that want to participate. Um, and again, I think that's a underscore of those who want to. I mean, that was the other thing. Like it had to be up to the players. But you know, all players, as you guys know better than anybody, they have different personalities. They've got different levels of comfort. Some some of them even said, hey, I think this is a really cool project that we should do, but like I don't want to be a main character, so to speak. And you know, we've that has to be respected. Um and so they but I think one of the things that's that's also happened not only has have the media, like sort of the the platforms changed to be able to provide this amount of content at um, you know on demand for viewers, but also the actual tech, the equipment has changed as well. Like it's a much smaller footprint than you know if you're shooting a thirty second spot, there may be a lot more hardware. And it looks like a much bigger production than sort of the importance of being fluid and nimble over the course of a season. And so, you know, the hope is it's not going to feel that intrusive over time. I'm sure at, at the start of spring training, it's just it's different, you know, and we've never done this before. So it'll take a little getting used to, which is also something that he talked about. But the more you get used to the people, the more you get used to the people behind the camera over the course of 162, things seem to to be fluid, and you know, and, and so, 
and and people will get more hopefully get get more comfortable. So we'll we'll see. Our eyes are are, are wide open, but I think we feel really good about the relationships and that this that the director and the production team have have built over the last year and and also the understanding um, and the buy-in from the players of what they need to to be able to do to provide the access that a, a series like this is reliant upon. Gordon, you got anything else? I, yeah, no, I find it fascinating talking about talking about the Red Sox and talking about baseball like this. Like we're talking about guys who have to express potentially an openness to being main characters here. Were there guys who were who maybe expressed that they wanted to be main characters in something like this, or was it more so just an openness from guys that you needed to hear that people were open to it, less of a desire? Yeah, I, I think, and again, I, I, I don't want to put my director hat on because I am not the director, you know, and, and I've never heard, you know, you know Greg w- w- would say, you'd have to, you have to want to be, but sometimes that story, like we don't know what the stories are going to be. And it's not, then these stories are not necessarily sort of baseball exclusive. You know, I mean, you guys know the, the personalities, the players and what they're going through and you know, that some of it's unrelated to, to baseball. And I think that's where some of this will come in and it's sort of like the stories form in a way over the course of, of the season so when you go in, you don't really know. You don't know who the characters are going to be. You kind of have an idea of who's interested and who, you know, who's from a season standpoint important. But you don't really, really know how the season shapes things or how a personal triumph or challenge might put a player that we don't, you know, we wouldn't sort of automatically say, oh, this person's got to be a character. Like, we don't know. Um, and I think that was the other thing talking to him. You know, we were trying to sort of set up some, hey, here's what's going on over the course of the season that we know of. And, he said, you know, some of this stuff you may think is a big deal. We may think is irrelevant. You know, like what we just we don't know. So that's sort of another thing about, you know, the vulnerability and sort of the questions like it is. It is a process that, as we've learned, is very open, and we're not exactly sure how it's all going to come together. But we do know it's going to be compelling, and we think it's going to be really, really interesting for for audiences around the world. Yeah, I mean, I, I the whole conversation, Adam, about players, how players treat their brands and players treat their public persona, even the last couple of years, is fascinating to me, which is probably a whole other conversation and podcast, but it's... It really is, you know, it went from, remember, you know, Schilling was one of the first ones with the, the blog, 38, what are 38 pitches or whatever it was. Yeah. And, um, and then some people, you know, they, they wanted the blog and that, and then the players tribune, you know, they want, we're going to get stuff out on our own terms. And then Instagram came, well, if I'm going to release anything, it's going to be on Instagram. So that's really, really interesting to me. And this is. This is, I think, the next step, and uh, I think that I speak for Gordo. I speak for a lot of people. Is that, you know, it's it's gonna be these things are great. I mean, this I don't care if you like the Red Sox, if you don't like the Red Sox, whatever. These things are great. They make you care about everything a lot more. And uh, so, congratulations. I know it went through a lot of stuff went into it. No, I, I mean appreciate that perspective. And and again, I think from from our standpoint, it's gonna give everybody a different perspective you know whether you i mean rob we've known each other for 20 years and i mean you've seen it all you'll learn something and see something based on your vantage point that you know may surprise you or may reinforce something um and the same thing for somebody in germany that may have never seen a baseball game before or you know, the Philippines or wherever it is. I mean, it's, it introduces the game and the players in a way that hasn't been done before in baseball. And that's, what's really interesting. And sort of no matter where you are on the fan spectrum, there'll be something for you here. And, um, you know, we're excited about it. You know, somebody asked before, like, are you a little nervous? Like, yeah, like, yeah, of course you're a little nervous. Like it's different. And you know, when you do things that are different, you're not sure how they're going to come out, but you know, mentor of mine once told me, you know, what makes you nervous usually, you know, like 
that can result in the best results. You know, if it, but it, you got to be a little nervous to do it. And, you know, like a couple of years ago, we launched the City Connects and, and that was another one where it's like, man, like, I don't know, yellow jerseys in this market, like, <laughs> How are we thinking on that? <laughs> and it worked. And it seemed like people have really embraced it. And this is something sort of in a very similar mindset, which is, you know, partnership with baseball. Baseball allows you it. We're at sort of the front of the line. And, you know, we're going to we're going to give it our, our best shot and hopefully have something that we think could be potentially groundbreaking. Awesome. Huge thanks to Red Sox executive vice president and chief marketing officer. There it Adam is. Grossman. I got it right the first time. That time. This is the first take. Didn't take multiple takes. Huge thanks for jumping on with me and Rob. Play Tessie Baseball is a boring collab there. Uh, for the super exciting project. I mean, I as we're recording this, we don't know what the public reaction is is gonna be to something like this coming up, you know, into this into the 2024 season. But my instant reaction is I'm really excited to see it. Coop, I don't know what you, what, what what it was here. When you first heard about this, what was your reaction? Why the Red Sox? I think that's I, mean, fair. I, I feel like that's I feel like that's the general question most people have. Like, why the Red Sox? Like we as you hear from from our buddy Grossman, uh, it's because the Red Sox were in on it for what three years they had said. Uh, so it's been an endeavor. It's been something that I'm sure John Henry has been a part of, and I'm sure the whole PGA partnership and PGA working with Netflix on full swing. I'm sure that didn't hurt too much. Um, but yeah, like I, I still don't know why the Red Sox, why Red Sox PR would want to welcome this in, uh, especially, I don't know, last year and this current year. I, I mean, do they truly think that they are an underdog team that can reach the playoffs? Because they don't act like it. So why the Red Sox, Gordo? No, I, I agree with you. And, uh, by the way, it's just me and Coop today. Sammy's uh he's got family matters and Pat is quote unquote sick as a dog. Yeah, he's he ain't moving. Pat ain't moving. But I Coop, I, I would love to get that answer. I would love to get inside the heads of the directors of this product and and I, I do wonder why the Red Sox, because and I and I have so many follow-up questions too, but I I do love and I understand why they want to they want to do something like this for baseball because they produced that quarterback documentary for Netflix and it was a huge hit. Like that thing was so popular. They immediately wanted to get it going for a second season. I know they've had trouble getting other quarterbacks to agree to do it. And maybe, maybe that's part of how it ended up being the Red Sox. Maybe some of these other teams weren't interested in, in putting their players out there like that. I mean, cause these teams are so overprotective of their players and we saw the Red Sox this year kind of cart out their top prospects at winter weekend and throw them in front of the crowd. And maybe this is just kind of a new philosophy with them. They're not going to hide these guys. They're going to put these guys out in the public and, you know, let them build their brand. I don't know, man. Like, I don't I know. The <laughs> most, all right. So we, we have some friends on the team. Zach Kelly, great guy. Murph Dog, love you. Um, Bernie. Bernie, yeah, Bernardino. Uh, but are these the most interesting crop of Red Sox players we've ever seen in our lives, Gordo? Be honest well, with yourself. You, you have to no, you have players, to you players have, to have had less of a platform than they ever do right now. And is this the most entertaining Red Sox team that you have seen? No, of course not. They have star power than they've had probably in our entire lifetimes. Like there were last plenty of last place Red Sox teams that had way more star power. But it'll be interesting because one thing I was thinking about, Coop, is with Hard Knocks, and I, I haven't watched that much Hard Knocks, but in, in the little bit I did watch, and I, I want to say the one I watched the most was with the Detroit Lions a few years back. Oh, good one. And good one with Dan Campbell. Yeah. Dan Campbell's great. and But they they had, like, these undrafted guys. Like, the, like there was this wide receiver. I don't remember his name. And he was undrafted. And he ended up getting cut before the season. And he literally never made a dent with the Detroit Lions. But like, the producer of Hard Knocks decided that this guy was going to be a story that they followed. What's that guy's name? Training camp. What's that guy's name? I don't know. Okay. I don't I'm know. Sure. I'm glad that worked out then. No, but I'm just saying, Coop, like, even, even if there aren't stars on this team, and, and that's another point, is the stars that they do have don't all necessarily speak English. 
And I, I, I'm curious about how that's going to go, but I'm here for all the Devers content. I don't like, I, I sound like I'm coming off as a curmudgeon. No, I'm it's very good excited though. to watch this. Like it's good to I'm, bounce this off because there's two perspectives of this scoop. Yeah. There's gonna like, be I'm very excited to like see this. this as a Red Sox fan at heart. But part of me is so frustrated with the way that the front office has run things that like, it's sad to say that the Red Sox are like a, a little bit bitter in the mouth whenever I hear about them. And so like the last thing I really want to do is consume anything outside of just the games. Cause at this point, I just want to see the product on the field. And that like, that sucks to say coming from me, uh, like the meatball fan that I am. Uh, but I mean, it, it I don't want to, cause is, is this coming out bi-weekly? Is it coming out at the end of the season? Do we know how it's going to be produced yet? I I know they're filming from the jump that Adam said that in the interview, but I don't know that we ever discussed the structure, though I'm sure by the time this drops, someone So that's what I'm curious it. It, it is like is this is if it's going to be something that they show at the end of the season, are they going to lose fans by that? Or is it something I that bet it they comes show, out? I bet it comes like, out as they go. I bet as this because like, that's how the Miami Dolphins did their hard knocks right. this past year. That's how I see it. And I didn't watch any of that, but that's kind of how I imagine it going. But that's I, not I how they've done it bit. in the past. Like all Ooh. the Netflix series in the past have been, it's at the end of the season. So like Drive to Survive, I'm a big watcher of Netflix. Oh, if you right. want to sponsor this, please sponsor us. I'll talk about Drive to Survive till I'm blue in the face. Um, you're right. Coop. But all of these shows, right. they show at the end of the season, even the QB show that they had with the NFL, they showed at the end of the season. So I'm guessing this is something that's going to hit in October, right. November, maybe December. So are the oh, Red Sox going to even be relevant then? <laughs> oh God, this will be interesting. I'm curious. Cause I'm sure. I'm sure by the time this episode drops, like that's going to be like part of the headline is how this they're going to structure the episode. So if you're listening to this, there's a good chance you already know. But as Coop and I sit here, we don't. So, this, yeah. like, <laughs> but no, it'll be. I'm curious. To go back to the point about, about like the lower tier players kind of having storylines made about themselves, which lower, like, which like lesser known player on the Red Sox do you think is most likely to have the cameras gravitate to them? Vaughn. I think, Vaughn I think some, Vaughn's probably going to, I think he's going to be the, the candy sweetheart or the, the camera sweetheart. Uh, candy sweetheart. What the hell? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, who who would you think? Well, I actually kind of I kind of love your answer because Von Grissom has a great personality and he has a good backstory. I was thinking good backstories, and I just I just immediately gravitate my mind to Brendan Bernardino. That's true. He's got a great story and he's got a great personality. Like, I don't know, I don't know how much he would be about like this kind like i don't know like there it's it's one thing to have a good personality it's another thing to like want to be that guy because that's another thing adam talked about in there is like there were guys who are for the idea of having something like this but didn't necessarily want to be quote unquote the main character we're gonna have main characters i don't know who it's gonna be i imagine it's not so, gonna be like a masa yoshida because he just he doesn't speak the language yeah but he like, might be the most interesting though he's kind of a quirky to learn guy. a little more um seeing so like nick pavetta being the guy that was instrumental which that's a that's a wild thing he would be the last person Crazy. i would expect to be like the leader in the clubhouse as far as hey let's do media stuff um, I know, right? but who do you think was the most difficult to convince oh god well okay here's an here, here's one thing I was talking with Rob after and he brought up a good point about why he thought maybe Pavetta could have been the guy is because he's like the player rep for the union. But it's but so like maybe maybe that was it. But like still, I just I have a hard time believing this was something he was super excited about when he first heard it. In terms of guys who I wouldn't think would be necessarily for it, I don't know. Maybe like maybe Raffi. Maybe Raffi, dude. Why? Because Raffi doesn't. Because he doesn't do a ton of stuff with the media. He even even like the Spanish speaking media, there's not a crazy amount out there. There's some people he does things with, but it's not a lot. And the dude just likes to go out there, do his thing, hit homers and chill. Like I don't think he wants his life to expand yeah, too far. Yeah, he's just kind of that. cool doing like his like small 
routine things. Right. So it's not like in like a grumpy way, like, oh, I don't want these people in my clubhouse. Not like that. It's just like. Yeah, but the like a, the world needs more Corita. Like? The, the world I just agree. needs more Corita in it. And it has for, for some time now. We Like that we my have... player that he did with Nesson. And he, like, that just like short little clip where he's just like, I just love to hit. Yeah. yeah I love that. Every Do you day remember is last good. year in spring training when the Sox social team mic'd him up and like he was like in, like with some of the guys and like he was shit talking with like Verdugo and Yoshida and stuff. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Was it not the uh, like there was my couple, story? Well, I think the one you're thinking of was him talking to Fatsy or maybe it, no, yes. it was Tim Hires. That was his my story. That okay. was like a couple years ago. And he's like, I get they paid me and I hit homers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is literally what he wants his life to be, which is why I think maybe I mean, it's turned out that way. Convincing. Yeah, and good for him. He's getting paid. <laughs> hey, <laughs> shout out Rafi for calling his shot. Um, so why do you think the Dodgers aren't picked? Like, I, I feel like that's the, like I said, like, why, why is it the Red Sox? Why, why wasn't another team? Coop, the only explanation I can think of for that has like there's no way that that these producers said and i and yes i know this started three years ago but i'll tell you, like newsflash red Sox weren't all that interesting on paper three years ago either <laughs> like so it, like it to me uh would this have been right after 21 maybe but started even talking so talking about it 22 so, 23 24 that would put it at three years ago so that's right after 21 so maybe they really did think after 21 but that group, think the about the names. that that group they had really was championship contenders but what names like even that tw that 21 team was awesome but like there was just a lot of guys on that team that we loved but weren't necessarily like national names and of course it's not like they snap your fingers decided on this three years ago like the talks built up and like it was probably finalized sometime this offseason I don't know, Coop. I, I the only explanation I can think of is that they went to other teams first and they weren't interested. Hold on. With that in mind, so you just admit, like, so we just they're planning this out for three years now. Yeah. That means that in this time span, they do not sign Xander Bogarts to do something worthwhile for the cameras. That means that they don't really go out like this past off season when they don't go after. Uh, <laughs> why? Why am I uh, not Yamamoto? Yeah, Yamamoto in a show Hey Otani that they don't make like actual bids on them, that they wait so long to actually make a big free agent move because Sam Kennedy just recently said that, yeah, maybe we might do that. I don't know. Um, and then last year when we let Nate Eovaldi walk, like there's so many instances of, Hey, you can do something cool for the cameras where we have, we know that we are going to have cameras in the dugout and that we want to attract big people yet. They still continue not to do that. And even this year they don't show up with anyone at spring training that is worthwhile talking about no offense to the guys on the team right now well it's 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 interesting coop and i i want to look specifically to this off season because like who knows how much they knew about this in the past but like this off season like they obviously have known this for some time like this is not something that comes together overnight and even now they could still sign guys who could be exciting like jorge soler would be exciting jordan montgomery would no, I don't want to say fortify, but he would certainly prove starting a rotation. Like you could go into the season with a chance to compete. Like this is a this is an ownership group who historically, and I know it hasn't felt like it recently, but historically they have cared a lot about the public perception and the PR relations. Like this is some like that's something that's been top of mind for them. And you would think that when you're broadcasting your 2024 season out to the entire world, that you wouldn't want it to be perceived from the beginning as dead on arrival because as as adam said in the interview they don't have final say in what gets put into this the red sox oh that team. first that first week when opening day hits and no one cares about them and then all the way to That's when the thing all the way to when the celtics and the bruins end their playoff run holy moly are those episodes going to hit like crack like that's I, I will too. tune in for that because it's just going to be like, all right, how do we talk about this irrelevant team? Exactly, but like that's that's what's crazy is because they could they could completely they could snap their fingers and make it relevant. Like 
like I said, this is something that's going to be broadcast not just in Boston. Like this is on Netflix. Like this is this is international stuff, man. Like why why don't you want to put the best version of yourself on display for the entire world to see? It's just I, it's something to think about. I don't know. And like obviously the off season isn't finished, but like we like I read that Alex Spear piece today. It didn't make it seem like they're bringing in any big reinforcements. So. We'll see. Maybe maybe it's going to be an underdog story, and it's like, oh, no one believed in them, and then they made the wild card. Like that, maybe that's the story. Who knows? How much uh, how much front office do you think we'll actually see in all this? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Coop, because that just reminds me. I was I was uh, thinking about it today, and I was looking it up because I remember the Brewer the Bruins had done something similar, and you can find a clip, and I'm I'm going to end up tweeting this clip. Uh, but they're behind the B that they do. Yeah. And like, they like have video of them being told that Nathan Horton isn't going to come back. And then they literally have it on video when they decide that they're going to trade Tyler Sagan. And it's like gut wrenching. And like, you could see the emotion in these executives. Yeah. And I like, mean, that like, that's would be something that's really cool to see for, for those that are fans of F1 and you haven't watched drive to survive yet. Um, again, plug for Netflix, uh, sponsor us. We're giving you free money right here. Hell yeah. uh, Netflix is worth Drive to Survive because it's awesome with how in depth it is and how high stakes. Like, there's so much more money in F1 than there is in Major League Baseball. Sorry to the baseball nerds out there. That's just the truth of economics. Uh, and they show some very big decisions being done with their front offices on that show. And it's wild. And that's kind of why they show it at the end of the season. But it's wild some of the stuff that they show on that. I welcome to Wrexham as well. Good. We're just talking sports documentaries now. Uh, any show that actually has given away the right, like any team that gives away their rights to the final cut, typically it turns out to be a good show. So that is why I like I will tune in. Like I do think it's going to be like kind of ugly at the beginning of this season. It'll it'll be interesting, Boo, because I I don't know how much they're gonna cover the fan perception, but a lot of this a lot of this is going to be like the into the minds of the players. And that's one thing I'm glad we talked about a lot is the player buy-in that's necessary for something like this to come. Because if you don't have player buy-in and the season isn't going well and like players, and I know it's going to be hard to hide from the cameras. You know, the clubhouse is not super big at Fenway and the cameras are going to be that's everywhere. Tiny. So there's not too many places to hide if, if you don't want to be filmed and you don't want to have to have your words blasted out to the world. But I think I, I thought I thought it was cool that they felt it was that important to get player buy in because not just for the, the importance of the product, but obviously for the success of the club. If the players don't buy into something like this and they're unhappy in their own environment, it's not going to bode well for your season. Uh, but obviously, being pitched this and actually doing it are two separate things. Like, if you're in an 0 for 20 slump and the team's lost five in a row and you got cameras in your face all day. That could be tough. So I'm curious to see how they respond to that. Do you think that the front office will respond to it the same? That's why, like, it's kind of like lumped in where, like, we have that player buy-in. Uh, is everyone in the front office buying in? Because, like, if they hit a certain stretch and that guy is 0 for 28 and they now have to think about trading that guy, uh, I'm curious to see, like, how much of those talks they are let in on and, like, if they show, like, that whole departure and... Like I, I hope they do. Yeah, like I, like that would be great to see. I think it would be awesome we to have both. That. Like if yeah, like if you have both the player being fully honest, I also want to see like the front office being fully like Cora Cora off the cuff would be interesting as heck. And I know he's not technically Absolutely. front office, but he is personnel. And to see what he has to say, like, is on his mind, especially how things you know boiled down to the trade deadline last year. Like that would have been entertaining as hell. You know, Coop. And, and I know that Raquel Ferrer was instrumental. Bless you, Coop. Uh, Raquel oh, Ferrer, no. bless you again. Oh, my God. I tried it might to just be myself. me on this show in a little bit. Oh, God. But, yeah, Raquel was instrumental in making this happen, and Breslow was certainly uh, in favor of it, uh, at least according to Adam on, on my interview. I would love to see front office decisions and – how those conversations happen. And it's just so weird because the Red Sox in recent years, and especially this offseason, to be honest with you, have been so secretive. 
that it's going to – like, I'm just surprised. I, I'm surprised in general. Like, they're going to go from leaking nothing to now we're going to get to see, like, literally see with our eyes potentially how this stuff goes down. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. And that's, yeah. that's part where I want to – I want to transition it to, to one last thing before we sign off. But I could just anticipate that when this news drops, there's going to be a lot of people unhappy. There are going to be a lot of people complaining just because I think any news that isn't Red Sox signed X starting pitcher that's really good. Red Sox they don't want to hear X about it. Deal. They, they just they don't want to hear. It's the same thing. Like you saw people complaining about Theo and Theo literally can only be good. It's just a matter of how good. It's either yep. a little good or it's great, but it's not bad. This this will be fun. Let yourself have fun. This is what I'm saying to all the people who are going to, uh, and I'm just anticipating this. You're just going to buy into the Fenway experience that they're slopping onto your plate, Gordo. What a softy. You're not a real fan. Go wear your pink hat. Listen, Coop. If we're, if enjoying about these guys and enjoying learning about their lives off the field and enjoying getting to see a little bit more of how, of how the pudding is made makes me a pink hat. Put a pink hat on my head right now. I'll wear a pink hat proudly. I first I of all, the term, that term sucks. I hate that term so much. Uh, <laughs> I'll wear a pink hat. Let, we got to do like a pink hat bet, or like some. Maybe we'll just do like if if you were. Maybe I'll just buy a pink hat and I'll wear it at like Fenway. And if you get a picture with me, like I'll I'll buy you an ice cream or something. I feel like Ooh, that Coop, that could get expensive. Treat. That could get expensive. That could. Careful there, Coop. <laughs> yeah. Hey, once we get that Netflix money. It's came over when we get the Netflix money. We get that sponsorship. Uh, Last question I want to ask you. Do you think this like cuts out the media in any way? And do you think like beat reporters will be hurt by this at all? I mean, it's dependent on like how it's structured and if it comes out weekly versus like if it comes out at the end of the month versus if it comes out at the end of the year. Like I could see this kind of stepping on their toes. I want to say no, just because even if it's coming out and like, Again, like people probably know the answer to this by now, but like even if it is coming out as the season goes, I feel like episodes will be delayed enough where the beat can do their job, write their articles, and by the time these episodes are coming out, Red Sox fans who are like reading the newspaper and reading these articles. They already have their like, not, Right. Like let's say the Red Sox sign Jordan Montgomery and Brad Fo puts an article out on WEI. That article gets a ton of hits right off the bat, but like two weeks after the fact, how many how many hits is that article getting? Like who who is learning that the Red Sox signed Jordan Montgomery two weeks later on the Netflix on the Netflix series that was gonna read the article, but now it wasn't. I don't know. I just I feel like they I feel like they're gonna be able to do their jobs. That'd be great if we had like Ian Brown fighting with like some producer at Netflix. Maybe they'll all. Maybe they'll get to be in it. Maybe like beat writers. Oh my get gosh! To talk about the team. Let's oh. get. Ooh. Let's get Bradfo <laughs> on Netflix. We need Bradfo on have Netflix. To. Oh my god, he's must see TV. Tiger we gotta King. get him on. Yes, <laughs> the Tiger King. I wanted to cry. Tiger King <laughs> in a baseball isn't boring. Uh, sure, that would. Oh, that'd break the internet. That'd be the Kim Kardashian picture. We should. Uh, can you send shirts? He's still in prison, right? I hope so. I think he is. I think or, I would. I think it would have been big news. Are we pro Tiger King or anti Tiger King? Dude, I don't know. I know the lady <laughs> didn't actually kill her husband. Yeah, she didn't. Like what, he's what actually alive. Deal? Oh yeah, he's alive, but he he like faked his death or something. Yeah, but Tiger King went to jail because he tried to have her killed. Ah, right. I don't. I never watched the documentary. It seems like oh, they're you all just see really it. crappy people. Oh god, yeah. It's it's okay. a mess. It's a beautiful mess though. I mean, Coop, they literally buy tigers and just like have a farm of tigers pretty much. Yeah, that and, feels wrong. I'm yeah. gonna come out and I'm gonna come out and say I'm I'm anti whatever that is. God, Bleacher Report sucks. I just got a notification from them. I'll two base sign an extension and it says all star shortstop. Their baseball content sucks. Whatever. Do you have any enough set? I've got one enough set. If you don't, I'll, I'll, if you don't have one, but if you have one, go first. Uh, 
I really don't have enough said. Um, okay, I'll give yeah, mine then. Go for and it. if you think of one, you can you can drop All one right. after. But truck day, truck day oh, happened. Yeah, <clears throat> truck day happened, man. And I know they said fifty to seventy five people went, and like I know they they'll like plan employees if they don't expect a lot of people there, and I'm sure they did that. So like I'm curious how many people went, but whatever. This aside from the point, I didn't go. I live very close to Fenway Park. I'm, I live like a 10 to 15 minute walk away. I'm making myself lunch. I work, I work from home during the day, making myself lunch. And I hear, and like people like will drive, I live on like a main street and people will drive by blasting music all the time. But when like I hear it there for an extended period of time, I go out and like look at like the jackass who's blasting music. And like, I hear someone blasting happy by Pharrell Williams. And it's like, who the hell is doing this? I go outside and I look, and it's the damn truck with a little parade behind it with, like, I don't know. I don't even know who was in the little parade, but there was, like, a police Wally. escort of the truck. Yeah, Wally was probably in the damn thing. Our girl Tessie probably was, too. <laughs> Tessie's probably the jackass blaring the music. Yeah. And, oh, my God, dude. I, I just couldn't because the, the happy propaganda, it's like everything is – it's like the everything is awesome – from like 2015 when they were in last place two straight years, but they were, their commercials were just singing about how everything was awesome. Those were miserable times. That's kind of where we're at right now, man. They're just blasting like, yep, we're all happy. Yeah, this Look sucks. at my truck. We got lots of equipment in it for the Boston I, Red Sox. It's, <laughs> we're going it's to spring training. does not need to exist anymore. I'm, I, like, it's a fun tradition and everything, but it was forced upon us. No one wanted it. It's like Arbor Day. Like, listen, I love the trees as much as everyone else. I don't need to be told I need a day to love it. Truck day, like, I'm happy that merchandise is being shipped down to Fenway Park or uh, Fenway South. I mean, um, seems like a like an organization that really cares about their carbon footprint or likes to tout that. Uh, they would make more of an effort to have direct shipping instead of emitting more fossil fuels into the atmosphere. Uh, so maybe maybe fix your uh, standpoint on that, Sam Kennedy. Uh, let's let's get around on that. Let's clean that up a bit. Uh, but yeah, like it's funny that like I forgot enough said when Truck Day could have been that, but I forgot about Truck Day. And the other day when when we put out our podcast on Truck Day, and I asked you guys, "Hey, uh, did you did you mention Truck Day at all?" Whoops. Well, yeah, because no one no one remembers Truck Day. No oh, one cool. cares about Truck Day. They do, something, do something better. Do like an Amazon Prime Day. Partner with them and just be Ooh. like, hey, you guys can all watch us buy our baseballs and ship them to Fenway South. Two days. They they had Truck Day last year, but I don't think they put on a production. So why why did why is this the year? Fenway experience. That they put on a production. Were the Netflix cameras at Truck Day? Oh, God, I hope so. Is that why they did oh, it? Oh, God, <laughs> I hope so. I don't know, man. I can't wait for this. But yeah, Truck Day, Truck Day was, I mean, I don't want to, I don't know. This is propaganda, man. I can't. But I digress. I hope you guys enjoyed our interview with, I'm going to, I'm going to get it right. Ready? Let's right? hear it. I'm going to get it right. Red Sox Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing. <laughs> no. Man. You were close. You were man. close. Man. I hope you all laugh. enjoyed our interview with Red Sox Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer Adam there Grossman. Is. There it is. And uh, curious what's gonna what the public perception of this is gonna be, but I'm hope you all I hope you all enjoyed our interview and uh, me and Coop chopping it up, breaking it down at the end. I I hope that you all enjoyed that. But if you did, and even if you didn't, just remember no, they did. They did. They, they probably we've been getting I, only we've been only getting likes on our YouTube videos, which, by the way, go subscribe, go watch over there. Exactly. So hit that subscribe here, right button. Now. You're here right now. You're here at the end. You've made it to the end. So hit that subscribe, subscribe right button. below, like right there. Like the Just button is there right there. Coop is we're, we're all we're both watching you like that. I can't. Yeah. Hold on. Ready? If you're wait, watching YouTube, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, point, I'm your pointing turn. to it. Your oh, turn. oh, your he turn. switched it up. Your turn. Gardo. I'm now on the left side, and Hold I'm them pointing. Accountable. There's a there's a thumbs up button there, and there's a like button there. And if you're listening to us on the Odyssey app, if you're listening to us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button and rate us five stars. 
because you know you want to and you love to hear it. And you want those notifications when episodes drop. We appreciate you all listening and we appreciate you all subscribing because I know you all just did it. But this one's been me and Coop. Uh, big thanks to, to, to Brad Foe for uh, having us in with him for that interview with Adam Grossman. Huge thanks to Adam Grossman for doing the interview. Exciting times <laughs> off the field for the Boston Red Sox. But this has been Play Tessie, episode 36. Thanks for tuning in. Toodaloo.